Welcome to Interfaith Views and Issues, a program designed towards establishing tolerance and a better understanding among different faiths and cultures. I'm your host, Shafayat Mohammed, and with me in the studio today is no less a person than Anthony. Anthony, welcome to the show. It's mm. a pleasure to have you with us, and uh, I'm sure you will bring a great message to Inshallah. our viewers. Inshallah. All right? Um, tell me a little bit, tell our viewers about you and your acceptance of Islam. But before doing that, I wanted to share a little bit about your life before accepting Islam. Okay. Uh, well, my family's Cuban and Mexican, and I was raised here in Miami. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to Catholic school from third grade to eighth grade. Mm -hmm. So I studied the Catholic faith for a while, growing up, going to Mass on Wednesdays and Sundays and doing confirmation and all that stuff, you know, all the sacraments through Catholic faith. And um, in my later years in high school, as growing up, I kind of started getting in trouble a little bit. And some things had to slow me down. And in slowing down, it gave me a chance to be able to start studying life in general. Okay. See what's uh, the purpose of life. Because mm -hmm. obviously the, 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 the way I was going wasn't leading me in the right direction. I saw my friends either getting incarcerated or or hurt, injured in whatever fashion. So I, I knew that there was something I had to change to be able to not go down that same path. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, obviously my first thing that I did was I picked up the Bible because uh, that's what I was growing up on. And from studying the Bible and getting in various different Christian groups, I started you know, studying Christianity a lot deeper. And then later on, you know, I started studying different faiths, trying to broaden my horizon, my understanding of things, study different, you know, nation Islam, uh, Buddhism, you know, all different types of uh, faiths mm -hmm. until I finally studied Islam. And then but were you practicing Christian before? Well, when I was living, growing up, no, other than just going to church and going uh, to school. You just had the name Christian. Correct, and, correct, okay. yeah. yeah. I didn't really have a real understanding of it until, okay. until I had that time in my life where I had to sit down and really get an understanding of life. And then that's when I really picked up the Bible, started really studying it, the Greek words, Hebrew words, starting to really get an understanding of spirituality. And then that's when I started noticing that, that what I was growing up believing isn't what I really believed in. Oh, okay. Because I started getting a different understanding of it. And what age was that? I was about 18 years old. Okay. 18. Okay. And uh, I started studying, <clears throat> and it just led me further. I just kept on going different from this book to that book or this study group to that study group and broadening my horizon even more. And then finally, mm -hmm. an uh, Islamic brother came to me because I really didn't have a good understanding of Islam. I was just picking up the Quran or whatever. And uh, where, where did you meet this uh, Islamic brother? I met him in Gainesville, Florida. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, I met him in Gainesville, Florida. He was a previous nation of Islam brother that converted to Sunni Islam. Oh. So okay. he understood where I was coming from because mm -hmm. the only Islamic book I had studied was Elijah Muhammad books, nation of Islam books. So did you practice Elijah Muhammad's I, teachings or what happened? I really couldn't grasp some of the things that they were okay. teaching because of the certain... You're on borderline. <laughs> yeah, I understood stuff that they were talking about that mm -hmm. I kind of believed, but I, there was things that I didn't. Right. So that's what led me, that's what held me from fully accepting Nation of Islam. So when this Sunni brother came to me and he presented Islam to me, I said, I've already studied Islam and it wasn't something I liked. And then he showed me the difference of what real Islam was mm -hmm. as opposed to what the nation was teaching. And then I saw the difference. And then I started studying Ahmadi Dot books. So what you didn't like in Nation of Islam? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, you know, they have a lot of politics involved right. that I consider a politics that's not involving the faith okay. of Islam. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> Black against white. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, a lot of uh, fundamentalism that it really isn't Islamic, it's more political and cultural. Right. right. From, uh, and that's why this show is Interfaith Views and Issues. Correct. Establishing tolerance and understanding 
among different faiths and, and cultures, cultures. Mm -hmm. because we really don't want people to tarnish Islam mm -hmm. with culture. Exactly. And that's a problem we have in. And there are a lot of people who don't accept Islam because they think it's a cultural religion. Mm -hmm. And you see a lot of people from India live a cultural Islam as opposed to a Quranic Islam. Mm -hmm. A lot of people from Arabia, Pakistan, and all these countries, even in the Caribbean, they have their own Caribbean Islam. Mm -hmm. Arabian Islam, African Islam, indo Pak Islam. Mm -hmm. And you know, people like you in America, and someone like you who came from a Cuban background, and uh, here, and you did you say Mexico? My mom, yeah, my mother's Mexican. Mexican. And, uh, born in America, grew up in America. You know, people like you won't really have a culture. Mm -hmm. You're looking for guidance. Mm -hmm. And when you look into the Quran and you see real stuff, that will win your hearts. Mm -hmm. But when you see culture, mm -hmm. <laughs> like Nation of Islam mm -hmm. or among other Muslims, then of course that will throw you off track. Mm -hmm. But Alhamdulillah, Allah guided you. You got the book, mm -hmm. you read, and that's where you are. Mm -hmm. So the brother you met, what were, what, 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 how, what were those points that he really um, emphasized on? Yeah. Uh, he emphasized, well, when he brought, you know, real Islam to me, uh, he was telling me, because he knew that I was studying different beliefs. And uh, he said, how come you haven't studied Islam yet? And then I told him, I said, I've already studied and it was a nation. Mm -hmm, and I didn't mm -hmm. approve of some of the teachings. And then he told me, well, real Islam is not nation Islam. That's a division of its own type of Islam. Okay. And then he started just telling me about, you know, the Abrahamic faiths which I kind of already knew, you know, Christianity, Judaism, Islam came from the Abrahamic uh, father, and then it spread out. And he was just telling me the difference. And really what helped me out is he guided me more towards tapes and books that I could read that gave me a better understanding, okay. which is what led me to start studying Ahmadidat tapes, Ahmadidat books, and that really brought in, put more perspective to what I already knew from Christianity, from Judaism, from all these different faiths because Ahmadi Dat puts it all in one and mm -hmm. it kind of helped me understand Islam in, in its purest form and made me realize that it was just very well, What year did you accept Islam? In 2003. Oh, interesting, interesting. Mm -hmm. It was after, yeah. After. So did uh, after 9-11 affect you in any way or distort your mind in any way against Muslims and Islam? Uh, not really because 9-11 <laughs> really. I had a different perspective of how I'm kind of, I don't know, I have my own perspective on how things go okay, ar yeah. around world events. So right, okay. I really didn't look at it as a religious thing. I really okay, didn't. So it didn't change your mind yeah. against Muslims or Islam with mm -hmm. all the anti-Muslim propaganda in the world? No, of course not, because okay, every faith had its own problems in its, life, people, in its yes. life. So you can't really judge it based off of events. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. So you were saying... Um, on the different points that he yeah he led me to the Ahmadida books and it just it just let me understand because it's just, it really is just one brotherhood and that's something that I was trying to look for is a unity one brotherhood because you know obviously when I was studying Christianity in Christianity itself it has so many different diverse groups within its own self from the same book and they all differ from one another verse by verse they differ from their interpretation mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and and that can confuse anybody and because of that it led me to start studying Judaism and, you know, Judaism, I kind of stuck with, I uh, liked it a lot. It had a law or whatnot that you could abide by. And then when Islam came along, it just, it just made more sense. It completed the whole system of me studying Christianity, Judaism, and then Islam. It just made a full circle that I felt it completed. Which is good, because after having the background of Judaism, Christianity, mm -hmm. then it gives you a better understanding and perspective of Islam. Of Islam. That's why you can accept him being the final prophet, mm -hmm. Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and also the Quran being the final revelation. From studying the Talmud of the Jews or the, the Torah of the Jews, and studying um, the the New Testament of the of the Christians, and knowing their differences, and they're also under uh, they're also qu same qualities that Islam teaches. Uh, it made me understand. It's, it just made me understand that you know it mm -hmm. was all together in conjunction. But, uh, but speaking about the culture shock thing that you said, when I did convert in 2003, because I converted with actually a really tight brotherhood group that was about 10 or 12 of us, and we were real deep in our studies. We would be foot to foot, shoulder mm -hmm. to shoulder in our prayers. And it was when I got, when I kind of went to different masjids that I started realizing the culture shock. You go to different masjids and it's a Pakistani style over here, 
Bangladeshi style over here, Caribbean style over there. And that did throw me off initially because I studied with a bunch of converts. And we were very serious in general. And you guys had nothing like culture. No there. culture. It was, it was all, all about Sunni. Islam and it was book, etc. That's it. All Quran and Sunnah. That's yeah, it. Yeah. Nothing else. If it was not Quran and Sunnah, it was not accepted. So when I went to these different masjids and I see all these different styles, I'm like, what is going on here? You know, you're not, you don't want to touch my foot. You don't want to be next to my shoulder or saw all these different hand gestures or styles. Or, and it kind of threw me off and it kind of made me feel like, well, is it the same thing going on here in Islam that I felt I was, gonna, I was experiencing in Christianity and Judaism? So it kind of it threw me off a, a little bit and then I backtracked and then I got back focused again and then I realized that I couldn't judge it based yeah. off of the cultures. Okay, so you saw the little Arab contingency here mm -hmm. and the little Pakistani thing here mm -hmm. and the Indian thing here and Bangladeshis are together and Caribbean people together mm -hmm. and Africans to point together. Interesting, yeah. interesting. And it really threw me off. It made me want to walk away. Yeah. At but first, you're right. At first. Converts don't really g get into that kind of uh, garbage, yeah. if I don't want to put it, yeah. or that un-Islamic practice. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the Muslims from East and Middle East, all with an East and Middle East background, mm -hmm. propagation and teachings, they sort of hold on to this Indian Islam and this Arab Islam and this African Islam, which is really, really tarnishing yeah. the message of the Quran and the true Islamic life. And it, and it keeps people away because they're, they're judging Islam based off of how they see you perform it. And if they see you performing things a certain way, they're going to say, well, that's how Islam is. I don't want to be a part of it, and which again, is unfortunate. That's why we have this show, because mm -hmm. we want people to understand the diversity and the tolerance and acceptance that Islam has mm -hmm. in diversity and loving people of different cultures and different walks of life, living with them, understanding them. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a man who lived with people of all different walks of life. Believers, disbelievers, Christians, Jews, everybody he worked with. Mm -hmm. He worked with them. He did business with them. Today, because of culture, we have some Muslims letting their culture keep them away mm -hmm. as opposed to going according to the Quran. So I could understand how you would feel. Yeah. Coming into Islam is like, why did I come into this thing? Yeah, exactly. I mean, and that's exactly how I felt. But I mean, I love history and I studied history before mm -hmm. on my own. And it, it happened to every faith, every faith. When it went to a different subculture or, or, or different geographical location for where it originated from, it always had some different changes. Well, technically, which means that it has nothing to do with the faith. Faith, exactly. It is to do with the, the people. people. Yes, It's correct. the air of the people. Yes. It's the people's weakness. That's and correct. they use the faith for culture. Mm -hmm. That's correct. And mm -hmm. they, they mix it and blend it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Exactly. And, that's, and, that, and it's unfortunate, but... And it's best to get to the truest form. Yes. And also to, to be able to show people its truest form so that they could be able to judge it to its best quality as opposed to because they could turn away from something for something that has nothing to do with Islam. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the same thing can go for someone turning away from Christianity or Judaism or any faith. They could be turning away from something that has nothing to do with the faith. Nothing to do with the faith. You yeah. know, and it's unfortunate. But I always tell people not to judge a book by its cover. You have to read it for yourself and get your own understanding. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But people don't want to do that. You know, they, they love, people, I've noticed that people tend to love to judge uh, something based off of what someone else told them, or they want to go by what the preacher says, or they want to go by what the imam says or what this person says, and they don't want to study on their own and see what exactly it says. They just take that as solid gold, and sometimes it will mislead them. And even the, 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 the Bible says it, where, where Jesus says that the leaders will follow you, you will follow the leaders right into the pit of hell, and the Quran says it, and the Torah says it. And, uh, and if every faith says it, then how come we're allowing ourselves to fall, you know, fall victim to it? Now that you're a Muslim, um, how do you interact with members of your family mm -hmm. who are not Muslims? And what kind of experience did you have? Um, were they supportive of you? And what, what sort of things happen? I, I, I'm very interested in knowing about that. And I think our viewers, and you know we got worldwide viewers mm -hmm. on Al Hikmat TV online, with 24 seven online, and people all over the world are very interested in knowing about Muslims, new Muslims, converts, especially people like you who came from a different faith, and how you worked with them, how you lived with them, how you, adjusted to people of other faiths and your faith that you were in before Islam. 
you know, that's very important because we need people to understand that sort of combination, complication, and how they should interact, tolerate, and understand one another. But right now, we've got to go on a short break. When we get back, we'll continue a little bit on your experience, that diversity and how you um, lived with people and are living with people of different faiths and different beliefs, etc., inshallah. So viewers, again, with us in the studio today, we have Anthony, convert to Islam, and it has been a pleasure talking to him. After this short break, we will continue our conversation with Brother Anthony on Interfaith Views and Issues, a program designed towards establishing tolerance and understanding among different faiths and cultures. Thank you. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Tune in to Who's Who in America and in your community. Hosted by Sister Naima Kangani with extraordinary guests every Sunday night at 8.30 p.m. on www.alhikmatlive.com. Tune in for Friday Khutbah at 1.30 p.m. Broadcasting live from Darul Uloom Institute, Pembroke Pines, Florida, on Al Hikma TV Online. Jashne Amade Rasul, Allahi Allah. Tune in to Young Muslim Talent in America, hosted by Salma Muhammad, with talented kids from all over America, every Saturday night at 8:30 p.m. on www.alhikmatlive.com. Allahi Allah. Thinking of doing Sadaqah Jariya for your near and dear ones? We recommend you to sponsor The Origin of True Islam brochure, The Genealogy of Prophets, or the Surahs and Zikr to be recited daily as Sadaqah Jariya for your parents who have passed away. Or you could sponsor one of the items for yourself, Fi Sabilillah. For more details, contact the Al Hikmat office at 1 800 804 0267 or 954 986 0158 or email us at alhikmat at alhikmat.com. Welcome back to Interfaith Views and Issues, a program designed towards establishing tolerance and better understanding among different faiths and cultures. Again, I'm your host, Shafayat Muhammad, and with me in the studio, Brother Anthony, better known as Abdullah. Did I have that correct? That's correct. Excellent. We had ended, before going on a break, on a very interesting note in that aspect of your experience with family members after accepting Islam or friends mm -hmm. as the, the case may be. Would you like to share some of those experiences with our viewers please? Yes of course. Well initially when I accepted Islam uh, my father is a Christian mm -hmm. and uh, my mother she's kind of veered away from the Catholic faith so she's just kind of on her own but the real conflict was with my father. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My father took it really hard that I was accepting Islam even though he knew nothing about Islam mind mm -hmm. you. And, uh, was he practicing Christian? In his own way, I guess you could say. All I mean, right. he has his own little way of studying okay. and doing his own little devotion. I won't knock him for that, you know. Uh, Is he Muslim now? No, no. Your mother? No, she's, no, they're not. Okay, good. They're just living their life. But, yeah, initially my father had a very bad issue with it. It was arguments, uh, some quarrels in the, in the house. And uh, it was basically just mostly because he thought I should have been a Christian because his father was a Christian though and I told him you know that you live in America and you alone living in America should teach you that everybody has their own right to their own opinion you know that's why we live in America so therefore you telling me to accept something because you're my father I know I have to respect you but that I still have my own mind to accept my own mm -hmm, belief mm -hmm. and then I gave him the example of Ibrahim or right. Abraham in their in their Bible where he uh, had to go against his father and family's wishes of worshipping idolaters and leave his family to be able to practice Islam and his faith with, uh, mm -hmm. with his wife. So, and that is very Judaism, mm -hmm. very Christian. Exactly. 
And, and I use that as an example. And you know, some examples, they don't work because it's all about your heart. If your heart's already stuck in a certain way, it's gonna be really hard to be able mm -hmm. to change mm -hmm. the mentality of somebody. So I would use the Bible as examples to try to lead them towards Islam. Um, but if they don't even understand the Bible fully, how can they prepare to understand Islam? Right. You know, and that's one of my main things that when I talk to Christians, when I approach them, is I try to get a feel of what they understand Christianity as. Because most of them don't even understand Christianity. They don't even know who the first church fathers were. They don't even know who the first people that actually delegated in the, in the construction of the Christianity faith that, as it is now. The laws that stand now. Because those were the church fathers. Who were they? What did they teach? What, did they, what were their mandates? Who taught them? They don't know these things. And that's very important to me. Because if you know who they were, then you'll understand why so many differences came along. And, you know, that's why I had a lot of you know, issues with, with that. But do, and you, it, do you have brothers and sisters? My sister's actually, well, because my mother's Mexican, mm -hmm. but, you know, even though she's Mexican, she really comes from an Indian culture. Okay. Not Indian Middle Eastern, but Indian American. Right. American Indian. Mm -hmm. So my sister is actually, her father's a chief on an Indian tribe in Texas. Whoa. So she actually practices on his tribe as an Indian princess. Well, she does. So we have a very diverse household. So we're talking Apache movies, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Is that what you call it? Yeah. Uh, the, well, the, she's the, not from the Apache tribe, but she's from a tribe that's in Texas, the, one of the largest, yes. Yeah, going wild, wild west. So my father, <laughs> yeah, so my father has a very diverse household that he has to deal with. He's always dealing with me as a Muslim, dealing with my sister and her daughter, my niece as Indian. Wow. And himself being Christian. So our household is very diverse as far very as Very diverse. Belief. That's interesting. Have you spoken to your sister about Islam? Is she aware? Oh, yeah. Do they know anything about Islam? No, of course. Uh, most people that I, I'm around mostly will know about Islam because I will bring it up mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. talk about it in some way. I have to slide it in the conversation. And uh, my sister understands it and she wants to understand her culture the way her father's bringing it to her and I, I'll respect her for that. Mm -hmm, but my mm -hmm. job is to at least let her have an understanding of Islam. Right. right so that she right. can have her own choice because you know there is no obligation. <clears throat> no, do you guys have a good family relationship? Oh, How is yeah. everything? Personal wise, everything is fine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Personal wise, we have no problems. When it comes down to religion, we just keep it where it's at. <laughs> and we talk as much as we can, but you know, we, are, you know, we understand that everybody pretty much believes what they believe. And you know, it's up to God to be able to change anybody's heart. And we, you know, other than us bringing the message to them, we can't make their heart change. It's only, to, it's only up to God and to themselves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, us, we just bring the message. And as far as friends, it's been difficult with friends that I grew up with because, you know, growing up, like you said earlier, uh, in the American culture, you know, we really have no spiritual laws. There's just, you live according to the law of the land. So you could be as well, free as... A law of separation of church and state. So that's why, yeah. You're free to practice your, your religious you, belief. You, correct. And you're not forced to practice religion. Correct. If you're a citizen of the United States of America. Correct. Which is why I was going to, which is why I'm saying is that we live so freely mm -hmm. to where we make our own decisions on anything. So mm -hmm. therefore, a lot of my friends, and I grew up this way, just making my own decisions about whatever, not looking at a book for guidance, not looking at my parents for guidance, just doing whatever they decided at that split mm -hmm. moment, mm -hmm. which obviously can lead to a lot of bad decisions because mm -hmm. you're not making mm -hmm. proper judgment mm -hmm. sometimes. So a lot of my friends, you know, or, or, or people or associates that I grew up with, you know, they're still on some certain paths that I can't be on anymore. And, you know, I can present Islam to them, but, you know, it can only go so far. Right. But do you, do you get involved in interfaith activities? Oh, yes, of course. I know you have been to some interfaith programs. Um, Yes. I try to get involved as much as possible, and I love to get involved in interfaith programs because I feel, as far as me myself, having been a part of Christianity sincerely, mm -hmm. practicing mm -hmm. and devoting mm -hmm. every day, being in study groups every day, and then going to Judaism and studying and being with those groups and practicing it and then converting finally to Islam, I can be able to give a perspective to people that they don't understand. You know, they don't, you know, they got, for them to be able to understand Christianity, they would have to go to the preacher. For them to understand Judaism, they have to go to the rabbi. Right. You know, whereas if I'm in an interfaith group, I can give them my actual experience outside from a rabbi, preacher, imam perspective because they know that those individuals are already practiced to teach you from a certain way. They love to hear it from a person that's actually practiced it on their own. On their own. Um, what about people who are older in comparison to people who are younger? Whom do you have a better conversation with? better able to modulate with them, the younger people or the older people? I mean of different faiths. 
Well, to be honest, it's usually always the older. Thir I say 30 and older. Mm -hmm. Because in our culture here in America, it's just too much, too much stuff, too much distraction. For the, for younger, the younger people, people. Oh, too much okay, distraction. Okay. You know, they have all. But I was thinking that the younger people will have a cleaner slate of religion and will be able to have a better understanding and tolerance mm -hmm. towards people of different faiths. But what you're saying is that the younger people, they don't really care anything yeah. about faiths. <laughs> that's right. That, that's They're a whole right. different perspective. That's the whole. That's the whole thing. You want to bring. You want to bring it to them, and, and, and they really don't want to hear it. Okay. You know, they're just too busy, I guess, living life mm -hmm. in their own way. Whereas the older people, they're more settled. They've already experienced their younger part of life. They've moved on from the fast, early life, I guess mm -hmm. you could say. Mm -hmm. And they have already have a perspective on certain things. And because they have that perspective or certain foundations, mm -hmm. I can be able to build on those right. based off of what I know. Okay. Whereas okay. with the younger ones, they really don't even have a foundation yet that mm -hmm. I can build on. So it's, it's, it's you're right, though. It is more of a pure format to, to build on because they have no mixtures of ideas. But at the same time, they really have no ideas still, some of them. So I have nothing to work with. Because, you know, when, I mean, I do a lot of lectures in universities and um, different groups, etc. And what I notice is the younger people or the students in universities and schools, they play. They mm -hmm. have friends of different religions. Mm -hmm. And it does not bother them mm -hmm. as to what religion their friend belongs to. Mm -hmm. Christians, Jews, Hindus, those who believe or don't believe, they all play together. They invite each other home as their guests and they would have all the good communications. But as soon as these younger people become professionals mm -hmm. and they get a job and they get married and they get older, then they start putting up walls, Muslim, Hindu, Christian, Jew, and they start living in their own compartment. So we have a little technicality here. Mm -hmm. When they're younger, you have no barriers. When they get older and they understand religion more, they put up bigger barriers. Where does that put you? <laughs> yeah, you're right, uh, and that's true. And you're, I, I agree with you on that. You're right. You can, you can develop the young mind because it's still pure, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as opposed to the older mind because it's already got its cup full. Yes. But sometimes, because they have their cup full, they're able to understand they're better. They're able to understand better Excellent. because they have an understanding of what they know. You know, whereas the younger person, they still don't even have an understanding. So, of their so own generally thing. speaking, both ways can work, or both sides got advantages and disadvantages. And disadvantages. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Correct. I agree on that. Yeah. But but I mean, again, being a being a Muslim, how do you see yourself now, man, as a young person in society? How are you able to tolerate people who don't like you, look at you different when they know you're a Muslim? I'm sure you, could, you come across a lot of uh, people of different faiths. H how do they look at you? Um, knowing that you're a Muslim, and how do you feel knowing that, um, well, I, I don't want to put it like this, that you're deprived of all the kind of um, worldly craziness that is going on in the world, people of your age, you are not involved with them. Uh, what's up with all of that? Yeah, that's right, because that's exactly how they look at it. They look at you as being deprived, as opposed uh, to having a blessing. Yes. That's the funny part. Because they have a secular mentality, though. They mm -hmm. don't have a spiritual mentality. And that's why I was trying to hit on with the younger group, because their mind is so secular, so worldly. They really don't have a mind that's ready to understand the spiritual parts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, 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 and yes, you're right. When I, when I'm, it's really a shock to some people when they first meet me. Because, you know, I have tattoos from my previous life before I accepted right. Islam. And me being Cuban, they're not used to a Cuban being Islamic. They always put a Middle Eastern person as an Islamic figure that mm -hmm, they think of. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when I, 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 I let them know that I'm a Muslim, it really does shock them. And then what I like about that is then they ask me questions, though. They ask me, what made you accept Islam? You don't eat pork? Are you, you know, especially Cubans. They're like, right. you don't eat pork? This is something that they eat almost every day. Uh, even their Cuban bread is made with pork lard. So, Whoa. yeah, <laughs> even, the <bread. laughs> even the bread is made with pork lard. So, this is you know, there's certain things that they, that they've grown up on. They're like, how can you turn away from that? And the only perspective that I say is that when you really want to make a change in your life, and you really want to, and you really want to devote yourself to God, you're willing to be able to turn away the things that God says to turn away from. Mm -hmm. And um, 
I think it helps me out a lot because it helps the door to be open a lot easier as opposed to, let's say, they might not be willing to talk to a Middle Eastern person because they might have that fear in their mind or right. their fear in their heart to ask them questions. Whereas me, I'm American, I'm kind of I'm kind of similar to them and stuff. They, they, they're more easily to be able to open up to me and ask me questions that they've always wanted to know. And it gives me a wonderful opportunity to be able to give them answers mm -hmm. and hopefully the answers help. You know, whether they take the answers and do something with it is on their own though. But my job is just to help them. So have you been able to convince any um, young person or older person who um, were not Muslim and you were able to motivate them to better understanding Islam and what Islam is all about? I mean, I've, and the, I've actually been able to do it for Muslims as well as not Muslims. Interesting. Yes. <laughs> you mean you make Muslims better understand, better understand their religion? Better understand their religion, of yes. course. Because, yes. you know, and it happens in a lot of households. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're raised a Christian, you go to church, you hear the preacher talk on Sunday, and then you do whatever you want Monday through Saturday. Yes. yes. So therefore, you don't really have an understanding of your faith. And you don't really have a true heart for your faith. So that happens in Islam too. A lot, a lot. Because, <laughs> you know, people don't read the Quran. They don't. They just listen to it, mm -hmm. hear about it, and they don't study themselves. That's right. Well, you know, Anthony, it's really a pleasure to have you with us in the studio and on this show. And um, we really look forward to having you again on mm -hmm. the show. Sure. But because of time, we got to go. And uh, I want to, as usual, ask you to say a few words, a couple seconds, you can share whatever advice you have to our viewers in a couple of seconds. Okay. Right now? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, what I would say is whenever you study any faith, any religion, just open your heart, open your mind, and actually devote yourself sincerely. And if you devote yourself sincerely, you will, and if you pray to God for understanding, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, which is something I prayed for all the time because I sincerely wanted to know what life was about. I wanted to know what God was trying to tell me. And by doing that, I jumped myself right into the books, and I studied, and I studied. I didn't go by what everybody was telling me. I put all preconceived judgments to the side, and I just let the book and the words tell me the truth. And based off of that, I was able to accept Islam and able to understand all faiths and be able to truly accept what I want to believe is the truth in, in life. And that's what I say, I, I tell anybody, whether you're Christian, Muslim, Jewish, Buddhism, Hindu, whatever the, your faith may be, study your own faith, and then from your faith, broaden your horizon and see if, if, if it's not something else that may touch your heart. Well, thank you very much again, and uh, viewers, you have been viewing Interfaith Views and Issues, a program designed towards establishing tolerance and better understanding among different faiths and cultures. I'm your host, Shafiat Muhammad, and with me today in the studio, we had Brother Anthony, better known as Abdullah, and uh, as usual, tune in to Interfaith Views and Issues, same time, same station, next week, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Mm.